Some corrupt cops think they can bully anyone into submission, but every once in a while, they meet someone who fights back. Just like this officer, who thought he could intimidate a lawyer during a traffic stop. What he didn't know was that the person he was messing with knew the law better than he did. On June 19th, 2017, a pair of Orlando police officers were conducting their routine patrol when they decided to pull over a vehicle due to the absence of any information linked to its license plates. Little did they know, they were about to encounter someone who would give them quite a challenge. Uh -huh. You're good. <clears throat> what agents are you with? I'm the state attorney. State attorney. All right. Thank you. Your tag didn't come back. Never seen that before. Um, I'm sorry. I'm like to yeah, we're good now. So it was. We ran the tag. It, I've never seen it before. A Florida tag. It's never come back to anything before. <clears throat> Behind the wheel of the vehicle sat none other than Florida State Attorney Aramis Ayala, catching the attention of the confident police officer who suddenly found reason to hesitate. So that's the reason for the stop. What was the tag run for? I'm sorry? What was the tag run for? Oh, we run tags all the time, whether it's a traffic lights and, and that sort of stuff. That's how we figure out if, you know, cars are stolen and that sort of thing. Also, the the windows were really dark. I don't have a tint measure, but that's another reason for the stop. Ayala was driving a state-issued vehicle. It's confidential and thus displayed nothing to the officer. Moreover, Ayala appeared to grasp that the officer lacked justification for the stop, raising concerns that racial bias might have influenced the decision to pull her over. Do you guys have cards on you? Yeah, one second. Actually, this isn't my car, but I can write my name down. Like. <clears throat> What's your uh, employee number? I'm sorry, sir. Ready? <clears throat> there you are. Have a good day. The officers quickly returned to their vehicles and went away after they realized who they had stopped. Ayala violated no laws, and there was absolutely no reason for the stop. She promptly stepped forward to express her intention to address the incident with the Orlando police chief, emphasizing the need to enhance police community relations and prevent similar occurrences in the future. While this lawyer got a clean chit, here's a contrasting incident where the police managed to gain control, yet little did they know, the attorney had outsmarted them entirely. Are we being detained? At this moment in time, they're not denying it. We have a video. Detain you. On February 23rd, 2017, Victor Revel and his associate, Megan Garcia, exited a hearing at the Blount County Courthouse alongside their client, Lloyd Edwards. While they stood together, Sheriff's investigator, Sergeant Sue Ashworth, approached with an officer bearing a search warrant. Sheriff's office. Take a look at it. Do you have any other weapons on your person at this time that I need to know about? RC. No, sir. No, no, in the car. Okay. I can ask you. You have the keys to your automobile? Yes, sir. I need the keys to your automobile right now. Okay. Let me pat you down. Make sure you don't have any other weapon. Just for your safety and ours. Moments before the officers arrived, Victor had taken his client's mobile phone for investigation. However, when the sergeant asked the attorney to hand over the phone to them, it led to a dispute. The warrants that you all have are for his person That's and, right. for, and for his vehicle. That's correct. So he has given the phone that's on his person. Okay, I have video of him handing the phone to you. You hand the phone to her. It's in the satchel right now. No, you all do have that, but that is not on. When you all no, I'm not here to courthouse with Brian. That was warrant. not on his person. Okay. So you all are not entitled to that. Okay. All right. Well, I can. We'll go the other route to get that other phone. Despite getting access to his car, the sergeant was adamant on getting access to his phone too. But it seemed like the attorney had pulled one over her. We have it on video that he handed his um, cell phone to his attorney, uh, one, and they handed it to another, and it's in the satchel that is right here. Well, are we being detained? At this moment in time, they're not denying it. We have a video. Detain you until we determine the next course of action. 
Give me well, just a minute. But I have this okay. person and vehicle. As the situation deteriorated, the sergeant could only see one possible option ahead. Yet, attorney Victor remained steadfast in his stance. Okay, we either need the phone out of the satchel or we will have to detain you and get a search warrant to get the phone. So you're going to, well, okay. Uh, well, we're not going to give you his, we're not going to give you anything on our person that you don't have a, a, a right to. So if you detain us, you know, you got there, you, you have to have, you know, certain, there's a, certain constitutional safeguards to do that. But you're going to detain us, then hey, we're not going to run. So. The sergeant wasted no time in detaining them right outside the courthouse. However, this wasn't the end of the matter, as she was poised to take it one step further. We are being detained. Is that right? Um, this, right this this time right what? now, you are being Say detained. Now, they determine. Okay, you both are under arrest for obstructing government operations. Obstructing government operations. That's correct. Definitely an unlawful arrest, but we're under arrest, we're under arrest. Okay. Refusing to consent to a search is not a crime, and it was clear that the attorney had way more sense of the laws than the cops around him. Moments later, they were busy making the arrest. Yeah, right. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. Sir, if you would, turn around and make sure you don't have no weapon on you. Yeah, of course not. Okay. You make sure. We have it on video. We have not, we have not broken the law. So if you're arresting us. Victor wasn't the sole individual arrested. Unfortunately, his unfortunate associate also fell victim to the ignorance of the officer. I'm Sue Ashworth. Sue Ashworth? That's correct. And this is And you, and you're arresting us under her orders? Observing the officer's indifferent response, Victor began pleading his innocence and attempted to reason with the sergeant, but it appeared to have little effect on her. This search warrant, this, uh, this warrant was given to him after he, he gave us some, some things for us to use in his defense. And so we did not but do anything to keep you all from doing you all's job. Now, if you all want to I'm out of here. This is uh, and go the sheriff's and office do it. at the courthouse. We we're not, we're not, we're not we're preventing you from doing the search warrant on the car. Uh, so I'm out of here doing Despite Victor's logical arguments, the sergeant paid little attention to him. Moments later, she attempted to engage with Edwards, but it was then that attorney Victor stepped up once again to intervene. Do you know where Joe is? As your attorney, I would advise you to, to keep your Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Both attorneys remained remarkably polite throughout the encounter, with Victor even beginning to inject some humor into the interaction with the officers. the arrest, another problem emerged as there was no way to transport them to the police station, meaning Victor and his associate remained handcuffed outside the courthouse for more than 20 minutes. The delay seemed solely intended to humiliate the esteemed attorney. Despite being inconvenienced and stranded, he maintained professionalism and courtesy throughout the encounter. Yeah, I'm 
Finally, the police cruiser arrived and both of the attorneys were taken to the police station, where they were charged with obstructing a government operation and refusal to permit inspection of property subject to a search warrant. Although the lawyer found himself in jail, he ultimately triumphed as the arrest was deemed illegal. Any evidence the police gathered from the phone would be inadmissible in court due to its improper acquisition. Throughout the ordeal, he maintained professionalism, providing exceptional service to his clients. This underscores Victor Revel's professionalism and intelligence as an attorney. Victor and Garcia's attorney, Tart, asserted that the charges should have already been dropped, and they intend to file a motion to have them dismissed promptly. This lawyer certainly outsmarted the cops. And here's another scene where a lawyer had to educate a police officer on basic laws. You're not gonna sit there and tell me to shut up. His deal, ma'am. There is no deal. I'm trying to explain I don't to you what questions. gives us the right. In March 2019, an insurance adjuster named Kenneth Grants was parked inside his truck inspecting a roof when a Blanchard police officer went over to him and started asking some questions. How's it going, man? Uh, you live over here? Or what's we doing over here? I've had a couple people call in on you. Okay. Am I doing something illegal? Well, no, they're just calling on you saying that I don't recognize a truck in the area. My duty to check and see if you live over here or what's going on. I live over here. I'm here for a purpose. Okay. The officer asserted that he had received calls alleging suspicious activity regarding a truck. However, Kenneth knew well that such reports alone didn't justify a police stop. All right, you uh, working? You see you got a ladder in the back. You working somewhere? Yes, sir. Uh, you got a driver's license on you just so I can identify you? Uh, have I done something illegal? Well, I like to identify you. Just know who I'm dealing with. Make yeah, sure. Fourth Amendment right not to show that to you. Well, if I make a contact with you for a, a reasonable suspicion call like I am right now. Being suspicious is a misdemeanor or felony. Okay. Well, sir, here's the deal. I was called on you, okay? Um, for a suspicious vehicle, you said yourself, you don't live over here, you have a purpose. What's your purpose? Is the purpose legal or illegal? That's for you to determine that. Okay. So if you're going to determine that, I need to see your ID. Uh, how is my ID going to determine whether I'm... Well, it helps to let you know who I'm dealing with. The officer recognized that he wasn't dealing with any ordinary individual. This person had a strong grasp of the law and was well aware of his rights. Despite this, the officer persisted in pleading his case. Okay. 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 I, I do belong here. Okay. All right. So, that, that's as far as I'm willing to take it. So, you don't, you're not willing to give me your ID? I don't have any reason to. Okay. Well, so, do, you, which, do you have a reason for being over here? Absolutely. Okay. Can I know that reason? <laughs> no. Okay. It's not none of your business. Well, it is my business if you're planning on breaking into something, which I don't know if okay. you are or not. Make that determination whether you feel I'm going to break into something. The officer persisted in demanding his ID, despite the individual's assertion that he had no obligation to provide it. Nonetheless, the officer continued to complicate the situation by citing illogical reasons. You're not from here. I'm not sure if you are or not, because I don't know who you are. Okay. okay. My plate's right back there. I'm sure you can run in. Yeah. Okay. So is that how you want me to identify you through your plate? If that's what you have Are to you do. the owner of the vehicle? Do you suspect that I'm not? I have no reason to believe you are. Well, I'm sitting in a truck in front of the house. Wait. For what? For what? Right here. Okay. That's not your business. It is my business. No, it's not. How, why is it your business? Because I want to make sure you're not going to break into any of these houses or anything like that. Do I look like that? I don't know. You have a ladder. Despite repeated inquiries, the officer failed to produce any substantial evidence indicating how the individual could have posed a threat. The only observation he could muster was the presence of a ladder in the individual's truck. Such reasoning appeared rather naive, especially considering it came from a law enforcement officer. If I'm conducting an investigation, which I'm currently doing, and you don't comply, it's obstruction, correct? Am I being detained? I'm asking you a question first before I answer that. Until I know whether or not I'm being detained. You are not free to leave at this time. Okay, then I'm... So, do you have an ID on you? Do you have an ID on you? I don't answer questions. Do you have an ID on you? I don't answer questions. Citizens have to start standing up for their rights or they lose their rights. I'm not trying to lose your rights at all, man. I'm just trying to make sure all these people around here live in this neighborhood are safe. Okay? Do you have any reason to believe that I'm I'm here for a nefarious reason? Do you you think I have any reason to believe that you're not? With the situation slipping out of his control, the officer had to call for backup. Uh, probably affirmative. Definitely need to. He's uh, refusing to give me identification. Well, I, like I said, man, it's not that big a deal. But I have every right to say 
I understand that. I'm not trying to violate your rights in any way, sir. I'm trying to do my job and make sure. Moments later, another officer arrived at the scene, and even he appeared taken aback upon hearing the truck driver's articulate defense of his rights. I'm my job. Up for my rights. And I understand that, like okay, I said. I haven't done but anything wrong. I'm doing my job, okay, conducting an investigation. I haven't committed a crime. I'm sitting here in front of the house, which is perfectly legal. Well, you're not completely on the roadway there, sir. Okay. There's also a public easement right here. Oh, it is a public because this is the city of Blanchard Road, so it's a public easement? No, the side of the road is. Oh, because this is the city of Blanchard Road, so therefore make a city easement okay. of a city road, right? What, what are you trying to accomplish? What okay. I'm trying to, all I want to do, I'm sir, is identify you. ID. Okay. However, the other officer decided to intervene, only to be swiftly rebuffed and put back in his place. Failing to come up with a valid argument, he resorted to a complete power trip, as he stated this arrogantly. I have to be, for you to ID me, in the state of Oklahoma, okay, I have to be suspected of committing a crime, about to commit a crime. Well, you are committing a crime, you're trespassing. Has anybody told me? Somebody has called in that you just, right. shut up. Somebody has First called in. you don't tell me to shut up. I'll tell you what I want to tell you. Okay, you're not going to tell still. me to shut up. I'm Somebody 47, 48, I don't care how old you are. You're not going to sit there and tell me to shut up. Here's the deal, man. There is no deal. I'm trying to explain to you what questions. gives us the right. After a back and forth exchange, the officer finally appeared to reach a conclusion, which the driver also agreed to. I'm explaining to you how we have the right. You don't have the right to get your ID if I've done nothing wrong. I'm trying to explain to you why we have the right to get your ID. You don't have it. I'm trying to explain to you why I have it. Okay, will you listen to me? Case. You may ask all you and want. And you are also required by I'm law. I'm not required by law. Upon request. If I, show you, if I show you the state statute you that you're required to do that, will you give me your ID? Absolutely. Show me the statute. Give me one second. Okay. The officer retreated to his patrol car and reached out to the assistant district attorney for legal advice. Little did he know what awaited him on the other end of the line. Hey, what's up, man? Nothing. Sorry to bother you. I got a random question for you, though. I'm dealing with something right now. Yeah, um, um, he, he's from Oklahoma City, but he won't give me his name and tells me he doesn't have to give me his driver's license because he's not done anything wrong. He's driving a vehicle? Well, he's parked right now. Well, but, technically, there's no obligation for him to identify himself, I mean, unless you've got reasonable suspicion that he's committing a crime. Despite being outsmarted by a lawyer, the officer's ego refused to relent. He persisted in attempting to fabricate a case out of thin air, driven solely by his bruised ego. Well, the thing is, is I have no reasonable suspicion to believe that he's not committing crime because he has a ladder in the back of the truck, and he's in front of houses that aren't occupied right now. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, um, there's no compelled ID statute in Oklahoma. I have to think about, I mean, do you have anything else to suggest that he might be involved in something illicit? If you're going to drive away, absolutely, you can make enough because he, he's, 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 or, you know, he's driving and oper he's operating a motor vehicle. But you don't have a traffic violation. That's all. Well, I fall him out of town until I get one. Yeah. The officer and the lawyer continued their dialogue as they attempted to bring up a charge. It was disheartening to witness how the officer treated a law-abiding citizen with such disregard. And it says 3 a.m. It says 3 a.m. And a camera. And a camera sitting next to it. Oh, he's probably a private investigator. Probably, but I don't know why he wouldn't want to tell me that. I asked him if he was a con... Because uh, those guys are douchebags. Yeah. I mean, that's been my experience, and they're probably some of the more people that don't have to come across. I've been involved in a lawsuit. Uh, yeah, and I just don't think you're over the line. I mean, I don't think you're, I don't think you're beyond that point. Okay. Well, all right. all right. I'll just, I'll just tell him that I'll contact Cleet. About the call continued for a minute, and the officer gradually realized that the individual was completely innocent and that he had no right to detain or arrest him. However, as he stepped out of his car, he discovered that the other officer had proceeded with the arrest. This time, even the initial officer seemed perturbed by his act of brutality. <laughs> I don't even know. Go ahead and just lock me up. What are you arresting for? I don't know. Not very long. What are you arresting for? What are you arresting him for? Huh? He hasn't violated really a crime yet. So not are you investigating a crime? Or a possible crime? Possibly. Okay, he's obstructing an officer for doing his duty, right? Okay. All right. All right. At this point, the officers started to gang up on the poor individual who was still bravely standing up for his rights. I don't even know. questions. Go ahead and just lock me up. What are you arresting him for? I don't know. Not very long. What are you arresting him for? 
What are you arresting him for? Huh? He hasn't violated really a crime yet. So not listening. Are you investigating a crime? Or a possible uh, crime? Possibly. Okay, he's vehicle. obstructing an officer. Okay. for doing his duty, right? Okay. All right. All right. Said you're meeting somebody here in a few minutes. Yep. Yep. Legal right to make contact with you based on a call. And I don't and have you're to that, that, I'm not here to, to listen to you. I'm here to tell you what's going on. Okay? I don't care if you record me. Okay. Whole, we are recorded okay, too. you're obstructing an officer from doing his duty, so now you're under arrest, unless you want to cooperate. Okay? That's the way it goes. Have a nice day. Okay. Would you like to explain the address and the time on the folder inside your vehicle with the camera? I don't answer questions. Okay. Oh, Look, you man. Didn't identify yourself. I don't answer questions. Look, man. They didn't ask a question. Hey. Kenneth, who had remained patient until now, was becoming increasingly agitated as his patience wore thin. It was at this moment that the officers decided to issue another unlawful command. Okay, but I mean, I'm why do I have to answer questions? I'm, I'm just, here for a legal reason. I'm not, I'm just trying to answer birth? questions. Can I get your date of birth? You're failing to I identify yourself. I don't have yourself. to, by law. You I have the failing. Fifth Amendment right. You are failing to identify yourself. I have to answer questions. You what have to identify yourself. Process. We need place investigative detention, okay? You're in investigative detention at this time. You understand that? They are, sir. Do you understand that? I said you're in. What did I say? After being placed in handcuffs, Kenneth finally came to the realization that he had to disclose the reason for his presence. Yeah, the homeowner's name that I can contact, make sure you're supposed to be here. Uh, yeah, but that's none of your business. Okay, that's fine. As a matter of fact, if you want to go talk to that neighbor right there, he has the garage door to let me into the house so I can get a photograph of the inside of that garage, that garage door. That's all you had to say from the beginning, man. I don't have to tell you that. Don't you guys understand what my rights are? Nobody said you have to tell us that. What we said is that you have to identify I yourself. Do not. You I do not. have to identify yourself. The other officer remained oblivious to his mistake and remained adamant that the individual had broken the law. No. We are investigating that you may be committing a crime and therefore you must identify yourself. What crime? Trespassing. Okay. That's trust number one. Okay, sir. To be trespassed, Keeping I have time to be for all we know. Okay. okay. And that's for all we know. To determine. That's right. That's and in doing that, we have to identify you. No, you don't. Yeah, we do. No. You can ask for my identification. I am not legally required to give it to you. Except that you have Fourth Amendment right not to tell you. Kenneth was eventually released without any charges filed against him after several minutes. He did an exceptional job of upholding his rights, causing the officers to falter and ultimately make a mistake. The Blanchard Police Department took note of the incident and initiated an investigation into the matter. Despite receiving legal counsel's perspective, the officer persisted in prolonging the incident, causing undue trouble for the innocent Kenneth. Kenneth attempted to file charges against the officers involved, but the district attorney's office declined to pursue them, citing insufficient evidence. If you thought that was satisfying, wait until you see what happens when this next officer tries to harass an auditor for simply filming in a public area. On April 22nd, 2023, YouTube channel Truth Be Told Audits posted a video of its visit to the Walt Hall County Sheriff's Department for a general audit. However, the attitude with which they were met with will shock you. How y'all doing? How doing? Need, need that? No problem. <clears throat> What do you mean by there's nothing to fill out? I find it extremely weird that there are no complaint forms at the sheriff's office. I'm sure it's now because of any possible sinister reasons. I guess I need to give her a volunteer statement to fill out, maybe? Yes. Okay, great. yeah, that'll work. Great. Yeah. You do that, you found one. And what if I needed a public record? Public records like what? From the sheriff's department. Do you have a form for that to fill out? What do you need? Or you need some more records? 
Yes, the public records. Like, we've got incident reports, and if you have to have anything that's confidential, you'll have to get a lawyer to subpoena us for that. I mean, give you like a report, that's all we have. Wow, the arrogance on her face is horrible to look at. Is this how public servants treat the people they're meant to serve? Well, if it is, then we're failing as a society. But the owners of the building also wanted us to come down and take some pictures of the buildings and stuff, so. The owner of the building, right. this building? Correct. This one and the one next door. And... So this is, maybe it's an officer in town you have an issue with? In, in the city limits? Well, I basically wanted to document the process as I have it, you know. So an officer complaint form, a voluntary... Mm -hmm. You got a volunteer statement. Form, handy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where do we what? Um, anywhere, it's just the street. There ain't, like, a, there ain't, like, a, a, we're just taking pictures. I love pictures. Don't you, like, taking pictures of different towns you visit? Oh, you don't? You don't take pictures at all? You don't? We need to get on that way. What's your name? Don't need to leave. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? I don't need to know your name. Yes, impose your authority where it is invalid like every other cop in this country. The behavior of our law enforcement just doesn't seem to improve at all. Huh? Yeah. What's your name? I don't like uh, to give my name. Looking in both of these vehicles. You mean something no. in, in, uh, along the lines of... He did. No, but I see you video in this jail. Yes. What right. race? I don't know who you think you're talking to. You're not talking to a bunch of criminals down here. No, ma'am. You need to ask me. Hey, get out of that car. Am I, am, 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 I in the, am I in that car? Am I in that car? business de-escalate for one how are you actively shouting at a citizen for a completely lawful act as a public servant each time i see audit cases these people forget their place and act like they personally own public areas you're saying so what, you what i can't see with my eye can't record i can record business. anything i can see with my eye well, and that's why y'all should be doing everything right right now y'all don't even know who we are that's the thing that's exactly Right, you right, need to right. tell us who you are. But you don't come out and ask you. You don't come out here yelling at the public. You don't come out here yelling at the public either. Well, you don't go in my vehicle looking. Was I in your vehicle? vehicle? Yeah, you don't video their vehicle. You scream at them, aiming to ruin their eardrums instead. Great job. Do you want an award for not filming people's cars? Gotta be a liberal. Gotta be. The only people out here breaking the law right now is y'all. I'm not breaking a law. You coming out here yelling at us like you think because you own us? Because you're looking in vehicles that is private vehicles. We're allowed to record anything we see from public. Look, first thing, talking and yelling um, ain't against the law, okay? No, it's They're, not. And y'all looking in personal vehicles, that's against the law, okay? That's called that's, plain listen, view doctrine. Listen, 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 listen. I'm not going to shut my mouth and listen. Okay? listen no, it's not like that. I can stand out here. I can walk through listen, this parking lot. Listen, Why do I got to listen to you? Because if, if it's a pers like personal vehicle, that's against no. no that's a no-no. That is uh, not a no-no. If, if it's... If it's our vehicle. Do y'all use plain view? Do y'all, whenever y'all walk into people's car when you pull them over, do you not, or not look in that vehicle? Use the plain view doctrine. We can look and record and see. If we can see it from public, we can record it from public. Y'all need to learn. Y'all, 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 y'all serious? Y'all really like this out here? The fact that so many cops have had to surround him to pacify the situation and still none of them know the Constitution is kind of scary. As a citizen of this country, the state of our law enforcement is in the gutter and, well, we pay the price for it. You already met me, yeah, smoking in a uh, city car, you know, that's not the greatest thing either. You know what? Don't approach me. Please don't get near me. I'm going I'm to let you know, okay? There's no policy against that. Okay. Sheriff's Department has no policy, so you're making an issue over something that's not there. We pay for those what cars. What you man. need to do it, is, is not get, get off, off this property. property. Yes, you do. This is this a restricted is area. No. Where, where's the signs? I do not see prison. not one sign. I do not see one this sign restricting this area. This is a prison. If there's no signs restricting an area as public property, we're allowed to walk on that property. 
See, y'all don't know the law very well. See, this is what we're out here to do is to educate. I've seen so many audit cases, yet these cops never fail to make me laugh when they demonstrate how uneducated they are when it comes to the law. These auditors always end up schooling them and their egos end up getting hurt. Yeah, everybody has tried to be nice and, and everybody and, and was has I tried raising my to voice? be. And was I raising my voice? And, and was I raising my voice? Was I raising my voice? Was I raising my voice? Was I being belligerent? Was Get I being, I'm, I'm walking off the property. And if I am moving that direction, I'm moving that direction. Yeah, yeah. Yes. This is public this is property. As far, no. It's public this property. This is as far as you can go because this is a correctional facility. Which makes it public that, property. No. Oh my God. When you start dealing with correctional facilities, you are dealing with a restriction. Do people come, do people, we got a cam back. Don't erase that because I'm gonna get that footage. These cops aren't going to get away with this. She is filming the video as if she's not in the wrong. She's filming evidence against herself. That is pretty hilarious. What you can see from public can be filmed from public. That is law. That is law. That is law. No, it's, no, no, it is, it is called, it's called constitution. Oh. That's exactly what we're doing. And the only people that are breaking the Constitution and violating people's rights right now is y'all. Oh, really? Hey, you'll see. You'll see. You, you're protecting and serving and telling no. people to get off of public property. You're protecting and serving yourselves. That's Let's go back inside. Y'all are all dismissed. Y'all can go ahead and go back to work. These cops clearly weren't cooperative this time, but let's see their attitude the next time the man revisited the department. Y'all, back out here at Walthall county sheriff's office in Mississippi coming to do a revisit this is where we were and got trespassed off of the public uh, property area a lot more sheriffs out here today but since we've been here last time put up restricted auditor happened to revisit the department just a little while later let's see how the interaction goes this time seems these guys are really insecure about their site putting up signs after such an incident is the ultimate shout of i'm wrong and guilty already? yeah it is sherry how are you doing uh, I'm here to drop off some complaint forms and do some open records requests. Right. Uh, I need the uh, footage from the warden's cell phone, the pictures that she took of us while we are out there that okay, day. Okay, you probably have to talk to the, um, the county lawyer. The county lawyer? Uh-huh. Because that should be on open, just an open records request. I don't know. It's above my, my pay grade. Well, Sherry has clearly somewhat learned from her mistakes. She's a lot more humble and amiable. Okay, that's all we got right uh, On both of them? Okay, we did on both of them. Make sure we get it right. Correct. We always, you know, as public servants, have to make sure that we do our jobs right. Okay. All right. I'm fixing to lock up go to lunch. Can, can, have a seat, okay? All right. You making copies? And those are the complaint forms. She's probably mad because he hurt her ego. Well, maybe she should just do her job properly then. Hey, how y'all doing? Good, good, good. I was wanting to see, I don't, wasn't sure if, if Sherry was here, but I need to follow a uh, submit an open records request. Submit a what? Open records request. Okay, and you got it in writing? Yes, sure do. Okay. And also if I can get it uh, signed and dated in a copy as well. Okay. And, I'll, and you I'll, are the sheriff, sheriff. Give me a forward and address and I'll Yeah, yeah, I got, uh, I got, a, I got, a, I got an email address that it can be sent to. Just send them that email address? Yes, the email address is on there, yes. D-T-R-A-T-S-2. At gmail.com. Gmail okay. And you're the sheriff out here. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm Daniel. Nice, hey, to, meet Daniel. You. nice to meet you. Man. This cop is much better than his fellow comrade. This should be the standard for our law enforcement, but unfortunately, such behavior from cops is actually rare. Um, 
I, I have to shake your hand because I really appreciate the fact that you came out and spoke with us. Yes, and ma'am. Of course. Have a good I'll, I'll see, you, you, see, you see, we're not. We're, we're not. not I'll die. I don't want to do it. I was at lunch. Uh, me and my wife. It was around 12 and 15 when we yeah. came yeah. down here and like that. So. I but, try to go from 12 to 12 and 1 if I get a chance, but sometimes it don't happen that way. I mean, right. we've got grand jury going on today. We present the battle of the case to the grand jury. Of course. So they, so they, so I'm sure y'all are loaded full of stuff today. Yes, so, yes. But like I said, you know, we definitely appreciate it. Yes, yeah, appreciate Thank it. You know, that's the way it should be, you know. We're out here standing up for, you know, our rights, but, you know, we're also standing up for your family's rights. Okay. You know, all, the, all the rights of everybody okay. in, the, you know, yes, in the United States. This is the state of the police force. If a cop employs common decency, you have to especially thank him when it should just be standard for us. All right, people, there you go. And just to let y'all know, there will be still a uh, 1983 lawsuit filed against them. These are just beginning stages. We need some of the uh, open records requests back before we can do the 1983 because we requested some stuff in there. So, but I do still plan on filing a 1983. They completely acted different today, you know, after they realized what was going on. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad it turned out a little bit better today. But, you know, they were already aware why we were here and everything like that. He clearly said that they seen the video and these cops could have easily gotten away with their transgressions, but luckily for the auditors being educated in the law and the video footage, I have to say it's hard to see a possibility where they're not being reprimanded. Much like in this case. In this next case, the auditor completely embarrassed uneducated cops with his knowledge of the law. Stop using unnecessary tactics against me that didn't happen. On August 10th, 2024, a video uploaded by the channel The Audit Observer showcased a man relaxing at his house when he was visited by two police officers officers who felt the need to disturb him for the pettiest of reasons. What are you doing at my door? Well, I just want to talk to you about your contact at West I don't care what you want to talk to me. I, I look, what do you, do you have nothing to talk to me about? Sure, I'm not here for a conversation. I am a, I am a productive member of society. I am a citizen of the United States of America. You guys have no reason to unlawfully be at this doorstep right now. Okay. I did I commit a crime? Do, did I commit a crime? Hold on, hold on. Answer my question, please. You are at my doorstep asking me questions, right? Can you answer a couple questions first? Before you get into your questioning me, I have a, I am a citizen here. You, you will not violate any rights today, sir. You always know how such cops are unwanted trouble when they act like this right off the bat. I'd act the same way if I was in this man's situation. So, was I suspected of doing the committing a crime? Possibly. Oh, possibly. So you have reasonable articulable, articulable suspicion of a crime? You could have been violent. It could have, should have, should have, could have, would have, possibly, maybe on a rainy day. Welcome to come to the West Bend Police Department. I am, I'm welcome to stay inside my home as well. That's fine. When you go to a parking lot and start looking into vehicles. That is a First Amendment protected lawful activity. I, it is publicly accessible, open to the public. I am here to give you a warning for prowling. Prowling. That if you're looking into vehicles could be construed as prowling, okay? Prowling for filming cars in a public area. Do these cops even know what prowling is? I don't think they do. Do you do? I'm explaining the ordinance. I don't want to see you get a ticket. How do I, and how do I file a complaint on this? Okay. Don't talk to my supervisor. No, well, you should have a complaint form, shouldn't you? Okay. No, I don't need a complaint form. Talk to my supervisor. So, so to make a complaint about you, I have to talk to your supervisor because you guys aren't crooked all the same huh back to the chief of police then okay all right i'm here to give you a warning for prowling and explain the ordinance to you when you're looking in the vehicles all right That's anything my eyes can see i can film it's a First Amendment protected activity and that was a publicly accessible parking lot. Yes, they should have a complaint form, but they won't. Why? To save their own hide. For these cops, they're the first and the citizens are a secondary priority and for some, not even a priority at all. Glad you guys came together, cause guess what? I will be back. Okay. I, I will be back to see you guys' department again. Okay. Thank you so very much. You, I, man, you guys will make my channel so amazing. You will see yourselves on the on the internet. Okay. You will see yourselves. Blah 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 la la la. Don't don't eat yellow snow. Don't walk in the middle of the street, guys. Try not to violate any rights today or kill nobody, okay? Try not to violate any rights today, guys, okay? 
cops are used to gaslighting citizens, but unfortunately for them, this man is very aware of his own rights and they are going to regret harassing him. Showed up at my doorstep for engaging in a lawful First Amendment protected activity. This is how crooked the cops are, guys. How the f they even know who I was? I don't care. This is the problem with the police force, guys. Look at this. Do you think this behavior is shocking? Well, you haven't seen the chief's response to the man's complaint yet. It will soon become very clear where these cops learn this behavior from. That's not a problem at all, sir. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to see me um, as quickly as you could. I very much appreciate that. Uh, can I get your name and your badge number? Sure. It's Chief Ken Weiler. Okay. Badge number? I don't have a badge number. I'm the only chief. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, I thought you may have had one. Okay, no. so I'm here to um, file a formal complaint. Um, you guys, I was told that you guys don't have complaint forms, and I, was, I wasn't given no, one. You can, you can file a complaint if you want. Sir, have a I have video footage of your receptionist as well as the lieutenant who engaged me two days ago, which I'm sure you know because you linked up with West Bend Police or with Hartford Police Department to send two detectives to my house yesterday. I will once again say not having complaint forms is ridiculous. There have been complaint forms at every police department I've ever been to. Detective McCarthy came to my house yesterday. Are you familiar with uh, federal statute 18 USC 13-242? I don't know the exact number. Okay, well that is deprivation of rights under the color of law and it is a criminal offense. I spoke to an attorney, I mean uh, to your lieutenant two days ago and had got have it on video it's all on the internet um about what i was doing he knew he knew i was engaged in lawful protect first pro uh, amendment protected activity he didn't try to violate any of my rights he called for backup and they stalked me and they watched me and i, I filmed it all and but he didn't they didn't try to do anything nefarious to me or anything this is what we need more people willing to speak up for their rights in the face of corrupt cops these cops are way too comfortable getting away with illegal acts easily first first day first day they threatened me with prowling then they officially warned me for prowling now prowling is lurking with the intent to commit a crime i have it all on footage that i'm just filming and recording and your officers knew that the lieutenant himself knew that he called for backup and did everything he did. I don't care, but he knew that. And so then the next day, you guys knowingly, knowing what I was doing, knowing the, 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 the preponderance of evidence that you guys had, the, there was no mitigating circumstances that would warrant you guys to even suspect me of anything nefarious. The chief doesn't seem too interested, but at least he's listening to the man's complaint. That's more than I can say about most cops I see in these cases. Can I, can I just interrupt for a second here? Yes, sir. Because you, your question is, is why you were talked to yesterday. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't have a question. I'm here to file a complaint okay, because okay, you guys that's falsely, that's fine. you guys you can, falsely okay, okay. gave me a okay. warning for prowling, okay. and I'm that gonna, is nowhere near you. what I was doing. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Can I can I respond to what you sure, just said? You've been if, talking the whole time. But if you're going to speak, you have to be accurate. Don't 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 and make I, inaccurate and statements and expect you. me to go along with them. I'm okay. not going to, sir. It is very clear now that the chief's sole aim is to justify what the other officers have done. His pathetic attempts are painful to watch in a perfect showcase of why the police force is so hated. Not letting me explain the reason. But you, you, you're explaining the reason before you even tell me if it's right or wrong, sir. That is not how you do this. You, you, can, you either say it's right or you say it's wrong, and then you give your explanation and reasoning as to why such an, such an occurrence happened in that particular point in time. Yes, it was you right. don't. Uh, oh, it was right. Yes. Okay. Based well, that's what I'm. The information. That, that is I what have. I'm going. How? When your all your all your officers talk to me, what information did you have okay. that suspected you I was probably? Tell me, please, please tell sure. me what information you had. Absolutely. The information that I had was that you and another individual were in the parking lot looking into vehicles. So looking into vehicles is magically illegal now? I can't imagine arguing with such uneducated cops. I'd probably just have a huge headache for the whole day because they're so insanely incompetent. The man did well to explain his side of the story, but as the chief spoke, it was very clear that his only intention was to shoot the man's complaints down. Nobody called you for a prowling complaint. Stop using unnecessary 
unnecessary tactics against me that didn't happen. Don't shoulda, coulda, woulda. Don't hypothetical me. You guys actually showed up at my house. This is not hypothetical. Don't give me a hypothetical possibility of something that could have happened when nothing happened, but you guys really came to my house. Don't do that. Don't give me a possibility when you guys actually took action. There's, there, that is not how this works. Are you not sworn to protect the Constitution and uphold the law? Yeah, so what law was broken? No, 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 no. I don't want to hear could have. The chief has now refused to tell the man what exact law he had broken. I think it's pretty clear that the chief was only attempting to further violate his rights. They investigated and the next day you still deem necessary to send detectives. The next day. After you knew what I was doing and I left the scene and went home and took a nap and nothing was happening and nothing, no laws were broken and nothing had happened, you still sent detectives. That is against federal statute 18 USC 13 242, deprivation right. of my rights under the color of law. I am filing a, logic, a formal complaint right now for that matter. That's fine. I'll have a, a supervisor. Please do. Do that, do that right now. Do that right now. But no, just, do that right now. I have the video fine. footage. You, you, I, ha, I will. I, I'm going to make your department look so bad. So you guys, you have been warned. So now, now we know. So go ahead and get your superior. I need. I, you guys won't give me a form. I'll have a supervisor come out and we can take it. You can write your own statement. You have um, a form. Yeah, for okay, well, then I don't need absolutely. to do it in an intimidation to you guys. Give me the form and I'll do it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Sure. That's all we need to discuss, guys. You see this guy? I thought he was going to conduct himself in a professional manner. This guy comes out talking about what they did was justified, like I'm not a citizen of the United States of America. So, okay, get my, get my complaint for him, and then we'll, we'll take about it there. And finally, here is an officer who thought he could strong arm a citizen. This person knew their rights and wasn't afraid to stand up for them. On August 4th, 2024, the one and only Long Island Audit Channel owner, Sean, would be filming at the Limestone County Sheriff's Department in Alabama when he had the misfortune of running into two of the most disgraceful cops to don the badge. Who are you? And your name? I'm sorry? I can't hear you. What are you doing? I'm just taking some pictures and video of the facility. Why? For my own personal use. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, I was going to go to lunch. The officer stared at Sean like he was going to be his lunch, but this was just the beginning of his useless tactics. Don't let me stop you. You're not stopping me. Still following me around, the correctional officer. See, the correctional officer's job is are to monitor the inmates, not free men and women walking around in public. I'm sorry, sir, I can't hear you. Your truck you is very loud. You don't have the, my permission to use my likeness in your film. I don't have your permission to use your likeness? Yeah, you're not using my image on your film. Well, we're in public. That would be a perfectly valuable request if the officer was a citizen, not a public government servant, therefore liable to a certain standard. However, in the next few moments, the officer failed to meet several of those public standards. You're in public, aren't you? Not on your camera, I'm not. You are in public. This is a public place. We're in public. You have security cameras here filming me. What I'm saying is I don't know what you're doing. I would appreciate it if you backed away from me. I would appreciate that. Just back away. But what I can say... I would appreciate it if you backed away from me. You're in public. You're standing inches from me. Back away. You're in public. Back away. This is the same kind of intimidation tactic that I would expect from a middle schooler in an ego contest. Imagine being an officer responsible for keeping hardened criminals in line, yet being this fragile. Go enjoy your lunch. This is not what you want to do. What's the name of the YouTube page? You want to go to lunch. That's what you want to do. You don't want to do this. There's no reason for it. You thought you were going to intimidate me coming up on like that, coming up on me like that. Didn't work, did it? Didn't back up an inch. Now please back up and de-escalate. 
or go get your supervisor. Can you call a supervisor because this guy is trying to intimidate me. You intimidate those guys in there, you ain't gonna intimidate me. Go to lunch may not have been the best thing to say to him on Sean's part, as that moment the officer was practically eyeing him up like he would have been a happy meal. Stop trying to intimidate me. Tyrant. I'd like to speak to a supervisor, sir. I'm the supervisor here right now. You're a supervisor here right now? You're sergeant? But I will talk to you if you turn that off. I don't want my likeness used either. Right, I understand that you guys have a problem with likenesses being used. I get all that, Sarge. Now, these are probably the same type of goofballs that share Punisher pictures on Facebook and think of themselves as rugged soldiers, when in fact they're just two donuts that managed to fit into a uniform. But what he can't do is try and intimidate members of the public. We and you as a supervisor allowed it to deputy, happen. We will have a deputy here shortly. You can talk to him. You allowed that as a supervisor to happen for him to come up in my space and intimidate me. You cannot video inside. This is a public lobby. Do not video. I'm here. I'm here. The supervisor seemed hell bent on trying to deny Sean from every space open to the public allowing his own emotions and ego to rule his judgment. I don't consent to using my likeness on your security camera footage, just so you know. Sir. Hi, ma'am. I was looking to get a complaint form. Okay, you no problem. Take your time. Okay, sir, so my higher-ups are at lunch right now. We don't have complaint forms. You can talk to somebody and file a complaint. Right, so there's no form that exists to file a complaint against a correctional officer? Not at my office, no. Not at your office. No. Where is the main sheriff's department? So this is the main sheriff's department. Well, isn't that just convenient? Can't have any complaints about your actions as a public servant if it's virtually impossible for anyone to complain. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Are you with the Limestone County yes. Sheriff's yes. Office? Yes, sir. Just a quick question for you. Okay. I was told that there's, there's it doesn't exist uh, complaint forms to file a complaint against a deputy or a correctional officer in this case. Do not, you know that that a, not a form like I a don't. form like a complaint form like somebody says comes into the sheriff's department and says, "Hey, I want to file a complaint against uh, deputy so and so." Sir, you just speak to a supervisor. There's no form you fill out. Yeah, so not that I know. There's not. Because I'm just I'm just patrol deputy. Okay. Um, if you do want to make a complaint, um, you can just Speech call up here person. Monday through Friday and, and report it to our captain. Ah, yes, I'm sure that is a wonderfully efficient process. If I, for example, wanted to make a complaint against the captain, perhaps, who would I go to? The captain, of course, so he can look through it thoroughly and then excuse himself. Hey, Josh. Help. Help me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would I would love to speak to you. That's basically everything that transpired, Sheriff. Um, Here's the deal, man. You're welcome to film and do everything. All right. I know what you're here for. You may get some reaction out of people. I'm going to go talk to them and let them know that you can be here and you can do this. It's just part of it. But uh, as long as you don't start harassing no one or sticking it up anybody's face, I don't care, man. You're welcome to be here. So. Right. But so, but what do you. Right, right, right. So, I'm not looking for anybody to harass me. I'm not no looking for doing. anybody to intimidate me. What are you trying? To, you're trying to provoke a reaction out of people. So. The sheriff completely misinterpreted Sean's intentions and reduced him down to a dumb YouTuber trying to get clicks. It seems he was incapable of comprehending First Amendment rights. But he didn't do anything illegal, did he? he it's very concerning that you are the sheriff of this county you and you don't. You, want, you could say you could say he didn't do anything illegal. He didn't, he didn't do anything illegal. Well, I would consider it harassment, so I would consider it illegal. I Here's would consider it illegal. If I did that here. to you, if I walked okay, up to you, to so if it's not illegal, I can walk up to you and, and, you and get in your face, you right? Yeah. Is it, you don't bother me, but you're not going to do it to other people. Okay, but, but I didn't I do it to him. He Listen came to up to me. You saw the video, I Sheriff. Was... It is very commendable what Sean deals with all the time, having dealt with so many of the corrupt cops. It should be clear by now that they're not willing to change their ways or uphold the law. Hey, but what like about said, what about recording is what about recording is provoking anybody, Sheriff? Just just recording in and of itself is not provoking. 
My, go my goal is to peacefully exercise my rights and to see how our public servants, including yourself, to Sheriff, you no, 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 to see how they react to us engaging in a constitutionally protected activity. It's and scary I'm to me. You took an oath. You are the sheriff of this county. You took an oath to uphold the Constitution. You're not going to have a civil conversation because you, one of your... It is. I'm not being argumentative. You're saying you're saying that I'm here provoking people, but you're not taking accountability for your officers who tried to provoke me and intimidate me. That same sheriff and the correctional supervisor would later try to censor Sean's footage of that day, which is curious. If they didn't think they did anything wrong, then what are they so afraid of? Up next, we have an absolute Karen from hell who managed to become an officer and terrorize the local population. There's no reason for you guys to put your hands on me and search me and do what you do because you, this is not Nazi Germany. This is the United States of America. On September 12th, 2018, the channel owner of San Joaquin Valley Transparency would be filmed in public when a tyrannical policewoman set her eyes on him and decided to blow off some steam. She videotaping? Yeah, facility? Why are you videotaping the facility? Okay. Smile on purposes? What's going on? I don't answer questions. Do you have any idea on your butt? I don't answer questions. Okay. We got a call for a suspicious person, okay? This is this kind of suspicious behavior. Okay, what crime do you suspect me of committing? Sorry. Act stupid, okay? Is knowing your rights and filming while standing on a public sidewalk qualify as stupid to this cop? Let's just talk about when you're standing in front of a facility that's a government building. And you're filming it like that. You caught the attention of the security guards, right? There might be some cause for concern for who you are and if you intend to do anybody any harm over here. Well, I I have no ill will. Word for it, okay? Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to identify yourself. Well, do you know that I am? We're standing in a public property, and I'm unless police, you're, okay? I understand. I'm investigating something right now. Okay, so am I. Now run away, everyone. We're dealing with Sherlock Holmes over here. She managed to perform an impressive feat and somehow gain the power to bypass the U.S. Constitution, because obviously that is the only way that she can demand ID, right? You should know that unless I'm being suspected of a crime, I don't have to provide ID. Well, until I can determine that you are not committing a crime, I'm going to ask you for your ID. Well, I think I'm going to have to decline to that, ma'am. Do you have a soup? What's your name and batch number? You can, you can decline. It's on my chest. What's your name? I don't see your name in your chest. Well, you haven't identified yourself to me either. So I don't have to, ma'am. You're yeah. a government official. You're entitled to identify That's yourself. Fantastic. Had this cop ever heard of innocent until proven guilty? Or did she just walk into the station one day and steal a uniform? Let's not make a bigger thing than we have to. This now, we're, I'm just doing a lawfully protected... Do you I'm, have, can you identify yourself as, as a journalist then? I don't have to, ma'am. This is the United States of America. No, I don't, ma'am. think you need to review the laws? Maybe you need to review the laws. Nope. Maybe you need to review the laws, ma'am. Okay. What's going to happen Do you have a supervisor? What's going to happen is you're going to identify yourself. If you choose not to identify yourself, because now I've asked you about four times. It is easy for anybody to act tough and correct if they have a whole crew to gang up on one person, as this thug was about to prove. What's going to happen? Okay. Then this is going to rise to the level of obstruction of justice, because I have to figure out what, what crime what, what crime do you, you suspect me? You tell me what you're doing here. I already Your told you, ma'am. is highly suspicious. I already told you, ma'am. No, you're not explaining Can I speak anything. to your supervisor? If you, if you just, if you simply identify well, yourself you, well, and explain what's going on here, then we don't have an issue. I already told you. But I'm going to start to get aggravated well, if you take up more of my time today. Do you understand? Well, ma'am. Okay. You're taking time for yourself. I'm a, pub, I'm a public citizen. I'm on a public sidewalk recording a, recording a public building. Now, if you are so easily angered simply because one guy with a camera won't immediately start kissing your feet, then maybe you shouldn't be a cop in the first place. You two treat me, ma'am. Don't put your hands on me, ma'am. Don't put your hands on me. There. Why are you, ma'am? Why are you? Am I being detained? Put that down. I'm, ma'am. You can have anything in your hands right now. Put that down. I'm ordering you to put that out of your I do not consent to any seizures or searches. Put that out of your hand now. I do not consent to any seizures or searches. That's fine. You don't have to. What crime do you suspect me of committing? What time? What crime? Am I being detained? I'm asking you to put that down. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. I'm not no asking problem. you, I'm telling you. you. I'm asking you to put She's that down. She's yeah. you down for this is what happens when you let a Karen into the police force.
This lady thinks that by just being a cop, it means that she can play judge and jury with anyone she feels entitled to an answer from. I guarantee you, you're gonna leave here before I do, and you're not gonna get my ID. I guarantee you, and you're burning me with your engine. You're burning me with your engine in my hand. Because I'm, this is for my, this is for my, this is for my safety, ma'am. Hold your phone, have a seat. This is for my safety. Do you have any body cams? You're, have a seat. she's, have a seat. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. You know, you have, you failed to identify yourself as a government official. I demand for you to contact your supervisor right away. I did not think it possible to be this big of a nuisance while being a police officer. She severely overestimated both her authority and capability. What, is, what's, what are you doing here today? Sir, well, right now what we're doing is wasting our taxpayers' money and harassing a uh, uh, good citizen that's only uh, gathering some content for a story. There's no reason for you guys to put your hands on me and search me and do what you do because you, this is not Nazi Germany. This is the United States of America. And, I'm, and I will be filing a formal complaint on you and you will be hearing from me. Yeah, I promise. Yeah, sure. Sir? Do you have an idea on sir? You? I do have an ID, I don't have it on me, and, and, and with all due respect, you should know that unless I'm being suspected of a crime, I, sh I do not have to provide that information. And the this man really set the record straight when it came to these officers behaving more like a tyrannical street gang than law enforcement. We can do this very simply. We just want to make sure, verify who you are, okay? What you're doing is engaging in suspicious activity. We got called here. So I'm being detained? You're, yes. we're Am I being detained? Yes. Being Under detained. suspicion of what crime? We're investigating that right now. What, you, then you have no authority of detaining me. This should be a consensual. This should be a consensual conversation. No, what's your name and batch number, sir? He has, he has the thing. Listen, you don't speak for him. What's your name and batch number? I appreciate that, sir. The worst part about this whole incident is that these officers, self-admittedly, don't even know what they're doing. They're just following along on the fact that this one Karen cop's ego was hurt. Up next, we have another audit case, this time gone horribly wrong with a highly illegal move used against the auditors. Are you going to allow him to violate my rights this no, way? Telling you what to do. Telling on April 18th, 2018, another video by San Joaquin Transparency was uploaded, highlighting his experience at the Kern County Building for Jury Services in California, where he received shockingly unprofessional treatment from law enforcement. Be happy? Yeah, I was just trying to get some information on jury services okay, and stuff. You have to turn the camera down. You're not allowed to record in the court building. Is this uh, public access, though? No. It's not? No, this is an official court building, so you're not allowed to record. So um, I have to ask if you turn it off. Well, it didn't actually say a sign outside. Well, this is a court building. Okay, so... I'm going to ask one more time if you would mind to turn it off, and I'm happy to answer your question. Okay, um, but um, no, my question is this. Off, so off, if please, the public... Please turn it off, and then I'll answer your question. Well, um, okay. actually... One, I gotta warn you one more time. You can warn me a million times, brother, okay. but it doesn't say that I can't record yeah, in here. Can't. What is with these public government employees and their extreme phobia from being filmed by the public? But what I'm asking is this public access. No. This is not public access. No, this so is if, if, if the public once needs access to find out about jury services, they can't come in? They have to stay outside Jurors of the court? Jurors summons, yes, uh -huh. and come in for a jury duty. But if, it's a, if you have a camera, you're not allowed to bring it in. But it doesn't say that outside. It's a court building. You're not Are you the supervisor? Yes, I am. So I'm going to ask one more time. Please uh -huh. turn the camera off, and I'm happy to answer your question. Well, um, I, I just had one simple question, man. Okay, turn the camera off, and I'm happy to answer. I like how even after blatantly contradicting himself, the supervisor still doubled down on his position. It just goes to show it was never about following the rules, but simply waging an ego battle. I'm just doing a story, man, like for information to help people. Um, get information like what, like, you know what I mean? How to uh, deal with jury services and court services and stuff like that. It just seems odd that you're willing to answer a question, on, not on camera, but. Maybe the supervisor was just feeling like a little shy princess that day. But unfortunately for the auditor, though, things were quickly about to go downhill. You know, we don't understand because if it's publicly accessible, we're allowed to go in and film in any corridor lobby. Because 
Because why? There's private information in there. So if you walk in there, people are getting selected for a jury trial, right? Right. Yeah. They get picked and they're on a jury trial, right? Private information. Uh huh. So if you know people that are possibly on a jury and you're filming uh -huh. it, uh -huh. that's private information. Right. So, now this would be a sound argument except for one issue. This would still apply even if he didn't have a camera, given the fact that he still has two eyes that can still potentially see who is on a jury. Well, I can go into any public accessible area and not for camera. Sure I can. Sure I can. And first of all, there's no juries in there right now no. for personal information. Well, I'm telling you, you can't. You understand? No, okay, I don't. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to call no, an attorney. No, 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 no. I'll tell you what you're going to do. Well, you're going to tell me what I'm going to do. Gonna, if you want to call your attorney, go ahead. We're gonna call our but if all you're gonna do is not listen to what I'm saying. Okay, do I have to listen to what you're saying? Yes, why is yeah. it you? Because you're I'm my boss, you're my dad. If Are that's you putting me on your taxes? Think. No. Dude, if you I wanna go in there, I don't listen. Don't listen. The security guard became increasingly frustrated with the fact that the two auditors wouldn't just simply roll over for him. And unfortunately for them had to face consequences for it. Don't, don't talk to me in my ear like that. Dude, dude, dude he can't touch me. Listen, you can't touch me. You can't touch me like We're that. We're giving though. you a choice. Hey, right record now. this. All right. Uh huh. You cannot record in there. Okay. If you record in there, you will be arrested. You yes. understand? Yes. Yeah. Well, I understand, man. But I'm already outside, dude. Look at this. I'm already outside. And what, he's, he's what twisting are you my hand. Doing here? Dude, don't twist my arm like that, dude. You're hurting me. Please. What? You're hurting me. Look, I'm not. I'm not. Well, the I'm not. story is right now on how public. Dude, you're hurting me. Please look over there. Finally, a first amendment. Dude, I'm here for peaceful protest, bro. And you're gonna be that is not public. He said. When all else fails for these officers, they all quickly just resort to physically suppressing any citizen with a spine to stand up against them. And what is even more ridiculous was that none of this even took place inside the building they were so willing to protect. Okay, okay man, that's fine. You're, but you're about to break my arm, man. Let's There's go. No need for that. Go put your cameras in your vehicle. Officer, what's, what's your name or guy's number, please? So what are you guys can you help? What is it? Can you, can, you, can you help out this situation here? Look, I'll get off the property, he's dude. He's charged. He's the first responder. I, I do what he's so, doing. So he's gonna, you, are you going to allow him to violate my rights this no, way? He's telling you what to do. He's telling you and I agreed, I agreed that I would do it. No, no, I'm going to go what, out. What are you going to do then? You didn't agree to anything. You're I, I told you that I would get off the property and call my attorney, bro. After you told me, I'll do what I'm going to do. He just told you that. Dude, right now. I just. You guys it seems no matter what they said at this point, these officers were only interested in satisfying their own bloodlust. Do you have a card? I need I need a card from every single one of you guys, man. Our department doesn't issue them to us. Okay, Walters badge number what? Eight six three. Eight six three. Like I told you, you guys Finley. are welcome to come in here. It is public, accessible to the public. Just no body cameras. cams on you guys. Do you see any? I'm off the property now. I'm on public. Now I'm on public, bro. We're I'm on, on public, public property, bro. Why don't you know the First we're on a Amendment, man? Sidewalk. Why don't you know the now First you're Amendment, to say dude? We're on your property still. If you guys want to leave, you fucking hurt my arm, leave. bro. You we fucking hurt my arm. I'm going to file a lawsuit against you. And you're of course, they had no body cams on them. They wear the county symbol on their uniform, yet continuously work against the county public, all while making sure that no one can hold them accountable. Hey, man, can you stay in between him and I, please? I don't feel safe around that guy, dude. Hey, Felipe. Hey, dude. I'm in Bakersfield. I just got assaulted by an officer. Officer. No, you said it's not open to the public. Officer Moreno, dude. He fucking grabbed me by my arm, twisted it. He tried to break it, dude. And uh, he fucking he took me to the sidewalk. I am in Bakersfield, California, at the County of Kern Jury Services. 1661 Truxton. These corrupt cops learned the hard way that not everyone will back down. Whether it was a lawyer, an auditor, or a well-informed citizen, they all stood their ground and exposed these bad cops for what they really were. Which case did you find most satisfying? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to check this next one right here.